Why am I nervous? <laughs> well, obviously, I have a good reason to be nervous. Okay. Hello everyone. Today's vlog is a little bit different from usual because today we're going to be talking about how I got some pretty serious reconstructive surgery on my face. So I didn't realize how serious it would be, but I did film a little bit about how I was getting ready for surgery and my thoughts on it. So I'm going to show you that and then we can talk a little bit more about the surgery and how it went. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the vlog channel. Today is the start of a journey of a vlog, which I'm sure it'll say in the title or the thumbnail of this video, but I am getting surgery. I do want to talk to you guys about it because it's something I think I've mentioned multiple times over the last few years and it's finally here. So I'm just going to document a little bit of this journey. It is currently December as I'm filming right now, as you can tell by the little Christmas tree in the background here. And I have pretty much spent this whole month pre-filming content for the month of January because I do not want to be filming during that time because I'm going to be recovering from surgery and the surgery is actually in two days. I'm super nervous about it but I'm also kind of looking forward to it. Well, let me actually tell you what I'm getting surgery on. So basically I do have to get surgery on the inside of my nose and my sinuses. This might not be a surprise to you guys because like I said, I've been kind of talking about this for a while. I've been having a lot of issues. I feel like my nose looks fine from the outside, but on the inside, there's definitely a lot of issues with it. So the biggest of which is that I have a very badly deviated septum, so I can't breathe out of my nose. And then also I have chronic sinusitis. So so I have issues with my sinuses. I've got cysts in there and that has been causing me a lot of pain and issues. So that is stuff that I have to get removed. And then there's also some things that I don't really understand what they are, but they also have to do in there. So yeah, there's a lot going on and it's, it's in a very delicate place, which is on my face. So I'm a little bit nervous about it. So to give a little bit of background, if you missed it, I believe it was back in the beginning of 2020, I started having some issues with sinus pressure on my face and I felt like it was just hurting a lot. And I went to an ENT who told me that I needed to get surgery. And then I went to another ENT to get a second opinion. And she told me that as long as nothing got any worse, I should be fine. I've had a deviated septum my whole life, but she said, if it doesn't bother me now, it probably won't be an issue. So she sent me on my merry way and I was very excited about it. I actually remember I had a nail art live stream right after that doctor's appointment. And I was so excited that I just randomly mentioned to everyone that I didn't have to get surgery. So I feel like that was probably the first time I mentioned it, but I was still having some issues. Weirdly enough, I was having issues with my ears where I kept on thinking that I was having ear infection. So I went back to the ENT and she told me that that's just something that happens when you get older. And I was just like, okay, whatever, went along with it. So then I kind of let it go for a couple of years and I didn't really think much about it. But then when I moved here, I started having more issues with it. Again, just like a lot of that sinus pain pain. And I've always breathed through my mouth because like I said, I have a pretty badly deviated septum, but I was just noticing that it was like impeding a little bit more on my life than it ever had before. So in the beginning of this year, which at the time of filming is still 2023, I went to an ENT and I started the process of just kind of figuring out if there was anything that I could do to fix it aside from surgery. I actually ended up going to a bunch of different doctors, tried medications, I tried sprays, and in the end, nothing was really working. So I talked to my ENT and he was like, listen, you really need to get surgery. So that's where we're at right now. And now the time of surgery is finally here. I got this news in like October, but I didn't know like when it was all going to happen. There was a really long waiting list, all that stuff, but I actually got super lucky. This is literally the end of December and I did hit my deductible this year because I had so many doctor's appointments, especially with the ENTs. And funny enough, it's honestly been such a nightmare like the last couple of weeks. So I filmed two weeks ago, letting everybody know that I was kind of stopping Vlogmas and that I had to prepare for the surgery. I had to cancel a little trip we were going to take and I've canceled all social things. So we're not doing any friend things or family or anything because I was told I cannot get sick because if I got sick, then they would have to postpone the surgery until 2024. And then I would have to pay a lot of money in order to hit my deductible again. And funny 
funny enough, the next morning after I filmed that video, I woke up with a cold. So that was really awful, <laughs> especially filming a ton of videos with like a super sore throat. That was really rough as well, but I did manage to make it through. So I'm feeling a lot better now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they will do the surgery. So anyway, it's been kind of a rough couple of weeks getting here. I've been feeling a lot of nerves and anxiety about this. Obviously, I think getting surgery is a scary thing. I'm not a fan of it. And I'm also worried about getting surgery on my face. I talked to the doctor a bunch of times. He's assured me that he's gonna try to make everything look as normal as possible. Honestly, if I wasn't on YouTube, I feel like I wouldn't be nervous about it, but I do feel like people on YouTube tend to be a little bit more, I guess, judgmental about things. Like, I, I'm very fortunate. I have a really incredible community, but I actually, I had to get surgery in 2019 and I was on bed rest for, well, I was supposed to be on bed rest for four weeks, but I had to go back to work after two weeks, but I was taking it very easy. I wasn't allowed to work out or anything like that. And when I started filming again, I had a ton of people telling me that I gained weight and asking if I was pregnant. It was not very fun for me, especially considering the surgery was to remove a tumor in my ovaries. So I just felt like that was kind of ironic, but yeah. So people, I, I feel like people point out and notice any sort of flaw online. So I feel like that makes me a little bit nervous, especially if I am gonna be swollen or looking different for a few months while I'm waiting for that swelling to go down. So yeah, I've just been a little bit stressed out, overwhelmed by it. I don't know what the pain level is gonna be. I've heard mixed reports. A lot of people say that the septoplasty portion is really no big deal, doesn't really feel like anything. So that's reassuring, but I've heard that the other procedures like the, the sinus stuff is pretty painful. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna be, but I'll, I'll let you know when it happens. So obviously I've been very anxious about this. And one thing I thought it would be kind of funny to do just to alleviate my anxiety and also just to make me laugh a little bit was to write a list of things that I always thought were normal Normal, that are actually not normal that hopefully will be fixed by this surgery. So I thought I would share it with you because it's kind of funny. So if any of these things maybe ring a bell for you, you, you might also have the same nose issues as I do. Thing number one, never knew this wasn't normal, not being able to blow my nose. Here's a fun fact for you. I have actually never in my life, <laughs> this sounds so crazy to say, I've never blown my nose in my life. I obviously like growing up, that was kind of a weird thing. My parents and I always thought that I was just... I don't know, like weird about it or scared of doing it, but I just physically could not blow the, the air, I guess, out of my nostrils. So that is something I have never done before. It'll be very interesting to experience blowing my nose for the first time as an adult, as a 32 year old. But yeah, anytime I've had a runny nose, I kind of just have to keep on wiping it. Basically this nostril does not have any access in, I, I don't know the technical stuff, but can't breathe out of this nostril at all. And then I only have like a small percentage of ability through this nostril. So it doesn't really work to blow my nose. Thing number two, this was a recent one I discovered, which is not being able to gargle mouthwash. Actually, I don't think it's called gargling. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're swishing mouthwash around in your mouth. Recently, I had to get this special type of mouthwash for sensitive gums because my gums were being a little bit sensitive. And the instructions said, that you had to swish it for at least 60 seconds. When I went to the dentist and I was talking to her about it, she was like, oh, have you been doing the, the mouthwash for 60 seconds? And I was like, honestly, this is embarrassing, but I can't hold my breath for that long. So I really only can do it for like 30 seconds. And she was like, why are you holding your breath? Just breathe out of your nose while you're doing it. And I was like, oh, I, I, I can't. Do, are you able to do that? And she was like, yes, that's... <laughs> you can hold your mouth closed and still breathe, but that's just not something I can do. I can breathe a little bit, like I said, out of this nostril, but it's not enough. Like I, I, if I close my mouth and I just breathe out of this nostril, I get lightheaded very quickly just cause it's not enough air. So yeah, uh, apparently people can swish mouthwash for a lot longer than I can. This next one's a good one. <laughs> Sniffling after every sentence. This one comes courtesy of my bestie Leah, who is the editor of our podcast, which we've been on a little bit of a hiatus for, but once I am healed, we're going to come back. But when Leah started editing the podcast, she was like, Kelly, do you know that you sniffle after every sentence you say? And I was like, yeah, 
isn't, doesn't everybody? And she's like, no, that's not normal. So uh, that's another thing. Just because I can't fully inhale, I guess. I don't know. I'm just always sniffling. I'm sure for Leah's sake and also for my own editing's sake, it, it would be nice to not have to edit that out constantly. Next thing that is not normal. I, I knew this one, I guess. Not being able to smell things. This one has actually been to my advantage, I guess, because what I do for the most part is just sit around bottles of nail polish all the time. And apparently this room and every nail polish room I've had smells very strongly of nail polish. And I have always said that I can't smell nail polish anymore because I've just used it so much. But honestly, I, I never really smelled it. So I never thought that it was terribly strong. Like people are very sensitive to the smell, but I definitely struggle to smell it at all, which I do think in part is probably just because I'm very used to it. But also I think I just don't have a very good sense of smell. I definitely struggle to smell things that people point out. You know, I guess I figured that it was because of my deviated septum. I actually don't know. Is it because of the deviated septum or is it because of the sinuses? I'm not sure. But yeah, not being able to smell things. I wonder how that, <laughs> how it's going to affect my ability to sit in this room and paint my nails all day. Next thing, this one's probably an obvious one. And I, and I guess I knew this. Not being able to breathe through my nose, which obviously, but specifically I noticed when 2020 happened, I started doing yoga. I felt like they were always like breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. And that was something that I was just like, I, I cannot do that. That I, I like, I'll, I'll faint if I do that because I cannot breathe enough through my nose. And I've gotten not like yelled at, but like reprimanded in yoga classes where they're like, Hey, you got to breathe in through your nose. Cause I'm just like, <sighs> So I don't know, just an interesting one. This next one is honestly a huge one for me and one of the reasons why I even went to the ENT in the first place, which is not being able to sleep on my side. Like I said, when I went to the ENT a few years ago, I told her that I just felt like I constantly had an ear infection. Specifically, if I fell asleep or, or rolled over onto my side while I was sleeping, I would wake up and I would think that I had an ear infection. It was like excruciating pain. And she told me that that was just something that happens when you get older. And she was like, well, yeah, you're turning 30. So it's probably just that. And I was like, okay, I guess that's true. I have always struggled because I, I try very hard to just sleep straight up and down like this. Sometimes in my sleep, I'll roll over anyway. And then I just wake up in serious pain. And I was recently talking to a few people, not recently, it was like last year, I was talking to a few people and I was like, yeah, apparently when you get older, you can't sleep on your side anymore because it's just excruciatingly painful. And they were like, that's different definitely not true. And then I asked some people in my family that are older and they were like, yeah, I can sleep on my side fine. So apparently, I mean, I, I guess it is a possibility, but apparently it's also strongly related to my sinuses. So when I talked to the ENT here about it, he was like, yeah, hopefully that'll go away. And then the last thing on my list is having a nasally voice. Honestly, I don't think I have a nasally voice because I grew up in New Jersey and I feel like everyone's voice kind of sounds like this. But this is something that I discovered when I started on YouTube many, many years ago ago was a lot of people would be like, why do you sound so nasally? Or they would be like, can you blow your nose before you start filming your videos? Or people would ask me if I have a cold. I feel like it doesn't happen as often, but especially when I was first starting, people definitely thought that I was always sick, that I just needed to blow my nose before I started filming. I don't know if my voice is going to change. I, I feel like it, it might, it might not. I have no idea. I've heard people online say that having the septoplasty does change the sound of their voice but when I've seen videos of people who say it, I don't hear a difference in their voice. So maybe it'll just sound different in my head, but maybe it'll sound less nasally. I don't know. Or maybe that is just a New Jersey thing. But yeah, that's my funny little list of things that I didn't realize weren't normal that hopefully will go away when I have this surgery. So kind of just a, a little way to make myself a little bit more excited about it. Obviously surgery is not the most fun thing, but I try to be optimistic and hopeful and whatnot. And I do strongly think that this is going to positively affect my life, especially just from the sinus pain that I feel so often. I'm really looking forward to not having to deal with that anymore. So yeah, that's the story. Surgery is in a couple of days and I'm just going to spend the rest of my time getting ready for it. So trying to edit a bunch of videos. I think I'm going to be able to edit when I'm recovering, but I definitely do not want to be filming anything with my face in it. But yeah, I will catch up with you and I'll let you know how it goes. So I'll see you when it's happening, I guess. <laughs>
I am back. I look a little bit different. It's actually been a month since my last update. It's been a little bit more than a month. So it's been like a month and three days since I had the surgery. I was going to vlog the whole experience of the surgery and the healing and all that stuff, but it ended up being very different than I expected. So I did not vlog that because honestly, I was just focused on healing. But let's just start with the basics. I do look a little bit different. My nose is a little bit bigger now. I will say it's still swollen. The doctor told me that I can actually take up to a year for all of the swelling to go down. But overall, once the swelling is fully down, it's still gonna be a little bit bigger because they actually had to do a little bit of reconstructive surgery and they actually had to take a portion out of my ear and put it into my nose. So they did have to make it a little bit bigger in order for it to be able to function. And this is actually the first time that I'm doing a full face of makeup. I just filmed my first video coming back. I still have like some scabbing underneath my nose because they, they had to cut open my nose to do the surgery. So I'm not actually allowed to put makeup there. And as you can tell, I did recently dye my hair. And while I was dyeing my hair, I accidentally swiped the like hair dye brush on this part of my nose where the scabs are. And it's like stained a little bit pink. I don't know if you can tell, but it looks kind of funny in real life. I meant to make my whole hair like wine red kind of color, but it didn't work out. Kind of brown with just a little bit of red on the bottom. And then some like part that are just like, I, I don't know, like a weird strawberry blonde kind of color. And also my blonde streak completely turned like a pinky orange color. So there's some fixing to do, but it's fine. But yeah, so I do look a little bit different. I do feel pretty different. And I wanted to kind of talk to you about the process of the surgery and the recovery. And then we can go back to the things that I said hopefully would change and I can let you know my thoughts on them. I ended up having about a four hour surgery. It was super long. They had to do a bunch of procedures. They did straighten my septum. So my septum is no longer deviated. They took out the cysts in my sinuses. They also, they did a couple of things that I, I don't know what it means, but it was just all like inside stuff. And then on the outside, they actually had to partially reconstruct this nostril because like I said, it was collapsed, which honestly, looking back at pictures of how it used to look, I don't know how I didn't realize how intense it was. Like it didn't seem that intense to me. And I will say, I think during filming, it like tended to look a little bit more straight and you couldn't really see, but I'll pop up a picture of one that I saw from recently in my photo library. And when I was looking at it, I was like, oh my gosh, I did not realize how intense that nostril was. Like it just did not work at all. So yeah, basically they had to take a portion out of this ear and put it into my nose to reconstruct it, which in itself was honestly kind of a huge thing. This ear has, it's still very sensitive. I won't show you because there's like a huge scar and it's still a little bit bruised, but feels kind of different. Like it looks normal from the front, but the back is just like gone. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's like the cartilage back there is just totally gone. So that's kind of a weird sensation. My nose is also incredibly sensitive. I feel like it's, it still kind of feels like it's not mine if that that makes sense. Like it's still kind of numb in some parts. So when I touch it, I don't feel it on my nose. I just feel it on my hand. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it's still very sensitive. It's still numb in certain parts and it also hurts in certain parts. So when I put on makeup today, I was like super, super careful. I did a very light coat of foundation over it. I'm a little bit nervous about washing that off, but I'm sure it'll be fine. They ended up doing the surgery. When I got out of the surgery, I felt totally fine. I was like, this was so easy. This wasn't painful at all. I feel great. And then obviously I was under anesthesia during it. So then when that finally wore off much later in the day, I was in excruciating pain. So I know I mentioned it in the beginning of this vlog a while back that I kind of heard mixed reports as to whether it was going to be like a super easy surgery or a super hard surgery or somewhere in between. A lot of people were saying like the deviated septum surgery was super easy. It kind of just feels like you have a cold. I saw some people saying that like sinus surgery is super painful. I didn't realize that I was going to have to have like the reconstructive surgery as well. So I didn't know what to expect for that, but it was 
the worst pain of my life. I did have painkillers and I was on them for the first five or six days, just every four hours or every six hours. I don't remember. Ryan was taking care of me, but yeah, it was excruciating. I've had surgery before and that was a pretty intense surgery. And I thought that that was a very painful surgery. This was way worse. I was basically just crying nonstop because even with the painkillers, I was still in so much pain. So I was saying that without the painkiller, it felt like a nine out of 10 on the pain scale. And then with the painkillers, it felt like it was a seven out of 10 on the pain scale. So it was very rough. The first day I didn't really look any different, but then the next morning I started getting a lot of bruising and swelling. So my eyes actually swelled shut. Also, by the way, obviously I couldn't wear my contact lenses during this process. So I was just kind of sitting there. Oh, and by the way, you cannot lay down after you've had nose surgery. You have to sleep sitting up for at least a week. So I was basically just sitting there in pain, unable to see for a while. So yeah, my eyes swelled up, my cheeks and my forehead also swelled up. And then weirdly enough, as the days went on, the bruising was kind of going down my face. And then it, it ended right here, like on my lower cheeks and chin area. And it was like pulling my skin down. That was an interesting experience, but slowly the pain did settle a little bit. So yeah, the process was pretty difficult, pretty painful, but I'm happy that I got over the hump and I'm also super glad that I ended up pre-filming because I really needed that entire month just to kind of settle in, let the swelling go down and also let the pain go down. Happy to be on the other side now, but I do want to talk to you about how some things have changed. I want to go over the list that I told you in the beginning of the video before the surgery and just let you know my thoughts on each of those points. <laughs> okay, thing number one was not being able to blow my nose. I actually still have not done that. My nose is still super swollen on the inside. So even though I can breathe through it now, I'm still hesitant to like blow my nose. <laughs> I've also been doing like these saline rinses. So I'm kind of getting everything out just from the rinsing. So I, I don't need to blow it yet, but I'll, I'll let you know once I do. Thing number two, not being able to swish mouthwash in my mouth. I haven't done that specifically, but as far as holding my breath, like I can keep my mouth closed and breathe indefinitely through my nose now, which is crazy. It's super cool. I was like laying in bed the first night after I got the, the packing taken out of my nose and I was just like breathing with my mouth closed and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> Number three, sniffling after every sentence. I, I don't know yet. I, I don't think I am because there's nothing really in my nose, but it's still a little bit swollen. So I, I feel like certain things are going to change over time. Maybe I should consult this list in like a few months and see. I, I'm not sure yet. This will be the first video that I'm editing since I, I got the surgery. So we'll see if I'm sniffling. Number four, not being able to smell things. Okay, this is crazy. I never realized how bad my sense of smell was until after this surgery. So I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I always said I couldn't really smell nail polish because I'm so used to it, but it was mostly just because I, I didn't have a good sense of smell. When I first opened up a bottle of nail polish after this surgery, I was shocked. I have never smelled anything like that before. I mean, I've smelled it like a little bit, but it was like 20 times stronger. And I was like, oh my gosh, now I understand why people get like sensitive in my nail polish rooms. Like when I was younger and I used to paint my nails in my mom's bathroom and she would get mad at me. I never understood why. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, that is an intense smell. When I walk into this room, I can smell the nail polishes. So at first I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to paint my nails all day in here, but I, I think I'm already used to it. But it was crazy the, the difference in the smell but I just feel like everything overall smells so different. I feel like I can just smell things that I never noticed before. I feel like weirdly I can like smell the inside of my nose if that makes sense. The absolute craziest thing that has happened is that my sense of taste has changed. So I have always enjoyed food. I've always been a foodie, but I never realized how much taste I was missing by not having a sense of smell. I didn't even know this, but when I got the cast off and I got like the stents out and the packing out and all that stuff, we got Pokeballs, which is my favorite 
favorite food, the raw fish and rice and all the toppings and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, they made it so good today. This was delicious. And then the next day we were eating and I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes delicious too. Like everywhere we've been going and everything we've been cooking tastes so much better than usual. Like, I don't know, like we must've gotten really fresh food this time. When I first went back to the doctor after that to get the stitches removed from my ear, he was like, oh, how's your sense of taste now? And I was like, oh my gosh, I did not connect that food tastes better because of my nose surgery. That was absolutely crazy. Everything tastes so much better to me. I just, I wanna go to every restaurant I've ever been to and eat the same food again because everything that I've liked, I feel like I love now. That has been absolutely mind blowing. I wanna like cry when I think about how incredible the experience is of being able to taste food strongly for the first time. So everything that I eat, I've been like, wow, this is phenomenal. <laughs> if you don't have a sense of taste, I, I didn't even realize that I was missing so much of my taste without my nose working. So just for that alone, this surgery was fully worth it. Okay, next one was not being able to breathe in through my nose for like yoga and deep breathing exercises and stuff like that. That I have been able to do. Like I said, I can keep my mouth closed and just breathe in indefinitely. It feels so immensely different to be able to breathe. It's just incredible. <laughs> I haven't done yoga, but I actually haven't been able to work out. But yesterday I worked out for the first time and it was really good. I actually felt very good. So yeah, that's been very nice. Next up we have not being able to sleep on my side. I will be honest, this is actually now that I'm thinking about it I probably shouldn't have done this list so soon I haven't been able to sleep on my side yet because of my ear situation I think if I could choose a side to sleep on I would probably choose this side and my ear is still in a little bit of pain and very sensitive so I can't sleep on that but I have woken up with like my head turned to the side and I haven't felt the ear infection feeling that's very promising I'm very excited and then last but not least we have having a nasally voice so I'm a little unsure about this one. I feel like in general, I don't think that my voice has changed. I feel like I sound the same, but I do think that I notice that certain words, I almost like spoke through my nose before and now it sounds a lot clearer. It's hard to give an example, but I feel like especially like when I start laughing, I start talking through my nose more and it sounds more like I have a cold or stuffed nose, but I have not experienced that yet. But I will say it's still very swollen on the inside. So if I do still sound a little bit like stuffy, I think that's probably why, but that that's gonna take time to go away. But yeah, overall, I think the experience, even though it was very painful, like I said, I think it's been very positive. I know I look a little bit different, but honestly, I feel like it looks pretty much the same just with this one side filled in. Like when I look at before and after pictures, it really just looks like they fixed the collapsed part. And then of course it's still a little bit swollen. It almost just fits my face a little bit better, which I'm very appreciative of. I know not everybody's gonna feel the same way, but that's totally fine because honestly, even if it didn't look good, I feel like just for the ability to breathe fully, to be able to taste food, to be able to smell things is such an incredible experience for me that it is fully worth it no matter what. So would happily go through that pain again if it meant that I could breathe like this and that food tastes so much better. I just, I feel like I almost have like this renewed outlook on life. Like everything is just so exciting now because there's so much to smell and there's so much to taste and stuff like that, you know? So yeah. Definitely been a journey. Looking forward to healing a lot more. Looking forward to the swelling to go down and I'm excited to just kind of get back into normalcy because I feel like I definitely still feel different. Like I said, you know, my nose still feels a little swollen and numb. Obviously it's still very sensitive to the touch and it's still swollen on the inside as well. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm very happy with how everything turned out and I'm really, really glad I did it. I was dreading it so much. I really didn't want to have to get surgery but now I'm like, man, I should have done this sooner because it was definitely worth it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on my little surgery journey. I will keep you updated as time goes on, just as things change and get better. So we'll see where that takes us. For now, I am just going to get back into making my content. I'm gonna try to start to get back into my old routines again and maybe have some new routines. So stick around to the vlog channel because it's probably gonna be a lot to get back into to like my healthy habits after being in bed for so long and just kind of relaxing. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.